sinking into the ground. Watch your steps, okay? Folks, please watch your step as you come on the green. I'll we'll put it around the first roller, please. under the tent and as close as you're comfortable. Before I ask the Lord's blessing on our time together, I'd like to um, read some thoughts about Nina Faye Forsyth, 98 years of age and a resident of Elyria, Ohio, went home to be with her Lord and Savior on Wednesday, November the 11th, 2020 at the Wesleyan Village in Illyria following a full and meaningful life. She was born on June the 18th, 1922 in Putnam County, West Virginia, where she was raised and graduated from Hurricane High School. <laughs> I read that and I thought, oh boy. <laughs> oh, a hurricane? Okay, okay. Uh, Nina continued her education in South Charleston, where she graduated from the secretarial program. She had made her home in Elyria for many years. Nina's spiritual heritage began as a young woman when she attended a revival tent meeting with the Reverend B.R. Lakin, who was a circuit riding minister. It was during those meetings that she came to know Christ as her Lord and Savior. She went on to publicly declare her love for Christ by being baptized in 1935 in Hurricane, West Virginia. <laughs> Nina loved her Lord and enjoyed singing in the church choir and teaching Sunday school. She was employed as a tool room secretary at CTS Corporation in Elkhart, Indiana for many years before retiring in 1984. Her hobbies included traveling with her late husband, William, in their RV, reading, shopping, and crocheting Afghans, to give away to family and friends. Survivors include her children, William Forsyth Jr. of Colorado, Linda Jervis of Florida. By the way, I knew Linda um, quite well. She was a member of our church when I came in 1990. And uh, Peter, I knew. And uh, I don't recall Darren. He may have been already, you know, grown up for then or something. I don't know, but uh, I do remember Peter. And my wife tells me that Linda was a Sunday school teacher and my daughter got in trouble one day and uh, <laughs> Linda came and said, told us about it. And so we made our daughter go and ask for forgiveness. So <laughs> a happy thought here. Okay. No. And I know Linda's in Florida and uh, yeah, that's, that's a great memory. And then Susan Friesner of Illyria nine grandchildren and 18 great-grandchildren. She was preceded in death by her husband of 72 years, William Franklin Forsyth, passed on October the 1st, 2017. Her brother, Joe Deacon, and her parents, Walter and Veda. Okay, Deacon, all right, good. I'd like to ask the Lord to, for his blessing as we consider some thoughts here. Our Father, Thank you for a life well lived. Thank you most of all, Lord, that Nina came to know you as her Savior. You became her Heavenly Father, she your ch child, as she responded in faith to the gospel message and was clearly and wonderfully saved. And she lived her life for the glory of God. And so while there's sorrow here today, there's... We, we, we sorrow, but we sorrow in hope and joy. 
because she is with you. And I trust that everyone here today can honestly and truthfully say that they will be with the Lord Jesus in heaven because we have been born again. We've had a second birth because of your death at the cross and resurrection to newness of life. So help us here today as we just think about a few things. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I think of a passage of Scripture which has meant a lot to me from the book of Philippians. The letter to the Philippians where Paul was in Rome under house arrest. And so he wrote and he was anticipating his trial before the emperor because he had appealed to Caesar and he was waiting. He didn't know how it was going to turn out, but he said this, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what am I going to choose? I don't know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. That's in the Bible, folks, right? I think we need to remember that, don't we? Why did he say that? Why did he say, of course, the Lord, through his apostle, is telling the church this. He said, for to me, to live is Christ. To die is gain. Why is death gain for the believer? Why? Can I share with you some, some thoughts, just four of them? I'll go, I'll, I won't be long. Because death takes us home. There's a song, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. If heaven's not my home, oh Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's distant shore, and I cannot be at home in this world anymore. Two terms are used in the Bible in the New Testament for believers, aliens and strangers. As far as this world is concerned, this is not our home. Our citizenship is in heaven. Our Father is in heaven. Our brother, the Bible says we're heirs with God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ is in heaven we are aliens we are strangers in this world sent on mission we have a mission but this is not our home and the one of the reasons why death is gain is because for the believer it takes us home here's another reason death ends our pain right death ends our pain even though we're saved we've been born again we talk about god save my soul yeah, but the problem is we're still in cursed bodies, right? That are aging and sometimes sometimes we, we get diseases and things like that. We don't have glorified bodies yet. But death ends our pain to be with the Lord Jesus. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Death, sorrow, pain, it's all tem temporary thanks to the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. A third reason is because death unites us with Jesus. Death unites us with Jesus. You know, we think of streets of gold and we think of all those things the Bible describes, and they're wonderful, but the thing that really is going to make heaven heaven is going to be, we're going to be with the Lord Jesus. Because being a Christian is not a religion. It's a relationship with my Lord who saved me. And I can walk with him. I can he talks with me in his word I talk with him through prayer and it's a relationship and so I want to be with the one I love and who saved my soul forgave my sin died for my sin on the cross so that I could be forgiven and that's what it's all about a relationship so it unites us with Jesus that's a wonderful thing and one more reason that death is gain is because Death unites us with our saved loved ones. With our saved loved ones. And here's the reality. Not everyone is a believer. 
Not everyone goes to heaven. Only people who have been born again go to heaven. And I'm, it's easy to assume here th today that everyone standing here knows the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, but I don't know that. I mean, I know uh, some of you, but I don't know that for sure. But the reality is this. There are no good people. We're all sinners. There is no one righteous, the Bible says, no, not one. That's our problem. We can't be with God, the Creator, because we're sinners. And that's why God himself became a man, born of the Virgin Mary, so that he might become the Lamb of God and go to the cross and take the sin of the world, your sin and my sin, upon himself, pay for it in full, be buried and the third day rose again declaring that he was a son of God the son of God and what he did at the cross was a satisfactory payment for your sin and mine that's why forgiveness and salvation is a gift we don't earn it we don't deserve it God gives it to us because all the all that was necessary for us to go to heaven Jesus did for us. It's finished at the cross. It's a gift. But we have to receive it by faith. We have to place our trust in the Lord Jesus. I hope, I trust everyone here. I don't know how many are here exactly. But I, have, I trust everyone knows that. If not, today is the day to place your faith and to receive God's gift of eternal life. But it's a wonderful thing that the Lord has done. Gain, death is gain, because it takes us home, it ends our pain, it unites us with Jesus, and also with our saved loved ones. What a great reunion. And Nina is there. Amen? Amen. She's there. And, uh, uh, you know, Jesus, when he was going to the cross, he said, don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves and your children. So let's keep that in mind. And those of us that know the Lord Jesus as Savior will see her again, along with our precious Lord Jesus Christ. So this is, these are sad occasions, but for believers, they're filled with great hope. You know, I just want, I, I just want to know before I pray a committal prayer, if uh, we could sing the first and last verse of Amazing Grace, okay? I'll start it out and I'll lead it, okay? Here we go. <laughs> Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound That saved a wretch like me I once was lost, but now am found was blind, but now I see. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. That when we first begun. Amen. I'd like to close this graveside service with a prayer, okay? A committal prayer. Our most gracious God and precious Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we think of Nina who you have called into your presence because she was not only born physically, but she was born again by your grace and mercy. Thank you for the evangelist that preached the gospel that she responded to. And so right now in this place, we are placing her earthly remains in the ground. We know that she herself Nina herself, her spirit, her soul, is with you right now. 
and we're waiting the day when the dead in Christ will rise first. We who are alive and remain at that time shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we always be with the Lord. And then Paul says, Wherefore, encourage each other with these words. We wait for the day when that will occur, the rapture of the church, and we know that it's, we believe it's not far off at all. So help us to be loyal, faithful, and diligent in serving you, and we look forward to that great day of reunion that we will have together. I pray for grace for the family, sufficient grace, help them, and watch over them, I pray. We ask these things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen.